I want to create a laboratory 1,000 miles deep in the earth. We could do cool things like put coal on a table and watch it turn to diamond. The pressure is immense. Imagine a skyscraper pushing down on your finger. The World Trade Center in New York is one third of a mile high. You'd need 3,000 of those stacked top to bottom to get 1,000 miles. How to make a lab that does not collapse from the weight of rock above it? Let's assume we have infinite technology, but we still have to obey the laws of physics. My idea is to pressurise the lab with gas or liquid at the same pressure as the surrounding rock. Imagine we have a tube with a piston inside of it. The piston represents the roof of our lab and the space underneath represents the lab itself. We fill the space under the piston with liquid. When we put rocks on top of the piston, the piston stays where it is because liquid is incompressible. So the roof of our lab doesn't collapse. When we put 1,000 miles of rock on top of the piston, the liquid does compress a bit because the pressure is so high. But we can just add more liquid using our infinite technology and the piston will move back up again. Our lab is safe. We could also use gas instead of liquid. As long as the gas is sufficiently high pressure, the piston will still stay in place. The roof of our lab won't collapse. Now, admittedly, the gas pressure would have to be ridiculously high, but we do have infinite technology, so that's okay. Does such a liquid or gas exist? Let's find out. Since we will be far outside of normal pressure and temperature, and because I have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm going to get ChatGPT to help synthesize the available information. Along the way, I learned about phase diagrams, supercritical fluids, and supercritical water oxidation. Be physically realistic. Imagine a human is a thousand miles under the Earth's surface. The human is in a special pressure and heat resistance suit. They want to be able to see the rocks around them. So they need to inject some kind of transparent fluid or gas. Otherwise, the rocks will collapse in on them. What fluid or gas could fill this chamber? Creating a transparent chamber deep within the Earth poses a range of extreme engineering and physical challenges. At 1,000 miles, pressures and temperatures are estimated around 300 to 400 gigapascals, around 3 to 4 million times atmospheric pressure. This turned out to be a lie, but I didn't find this out until a few days later. So I'm going to need to check some of these things myself. There are papers that use seismic measurements to determine the conditions at various depths. The Preliminary Earth Reference Model, or PREM, by Jiawongski and Anderson 1980, provides tables of pressure at different depths. PREM is widely cited and used. Let's put this data onto a graph. I'll put depth in miles on the x-axis and pressure in gigapascals on the y-axis. As we move from the surface of the Earth on the left towards the center on the right, the pressure increases. Let's add some meaning to these numbers. 1,000 miles is the distance between New York City and Miami. 4,000 miles is the distance between New York City and Paris. And yeah, you can tell I live in New York City. As far as pressure, 100 kilopascals is normal air pressure. 1,000 kilopascals or 1 megapascal is the pressure of a high pressure road bike tire. It's also the pressure of a 120 pound person who steps on your thumb. For obvious reasons, we can't experience pressures much greater than this and it's hard to see such pressures either. 10 megapascals is a hydraulic press. 100 megapascals is the bottom of the Mariana Trench. 1,000 megapascals or 1 gigapascal is the bursting pressure of an artillery shell. 10 gigapascals is the initial pressure of our 1 megaton nuclear warhead. 100 kilopascals normal air pressure. 1 megapascal a bike tire. 10 megapascal hydraulic press, 100 megapascals Mariana Trench, 1 gigapascal artillery shell, and 10 gigapascal a 1 megaton nuclear warhead. Now going back to our graph of pressure against depth, if I draw a line at 1,000 miles, we can see the pressure is around 70 gigapascals, a lot less than the 350 gigapascals that ChatGPT claimed, but seven times more than a 1 megaton nuclear explosion. So that's going to be challenging. So that's pressure. Now let's look at temperature. The paper, A Revised Adiabatic Temperature Profile for the Mantle by Katsura 2022, gives temperatures down to 1700 miles. I'll also add in some data for deeper in the Earth from Melting Temperature of the Earth's Mantle and Core by Boiler 2023 and Models of Large Scale Viscous Flow in the Earth's Mantle by Steinberg and Calderwood 2005. 
On this graph, the x-axis is depth into the Earth and the y-axis is temperature. As we go deeper into the Earth, the temperature increases. This first flat section is the mantle. The mantle flows somewhat, which keeps the temperature fairly constant. This second flattest section is the outer core, which is molten and also fairly constant in temperature. The core is some kind of iron-rich alloy. At the boundary between these layers, there's a big temperature jump and similarly near the surface of the Earth. Let's assign some meanings to these temperatures. 20 Celsius is room temperature. 100 Celsius, the boiling point of water. 200 Celsius is baking cookies. 300 Celsius is a soldering iron. 500 Celsius is the surface of Venus. 1000 Celsius is lava. 1400 Celsius is the melting point of steel. 1800 Celsius is the temperature of space shuttle re-entry. So going back to our graph of temperature against depth under the ground, if I draw a line at 1000 miles, we can see the temperature is around 2000 Celsius less than the 4000 Celsius that ChatGPT said, but above the temperature of space shuttle re-entry. So yeah, temperature sounds pretty challenging too. As far as ChatGPT, clearly it was just telling me the conditions at the centre of the Earth. We'll go there someday, but in today's video I want to stick to 1000 miles down, which already seems sufficiently challenging. Now, one good thing is that temperature and pressure are kind of opposite. High temperature makes things melt and boil. High pressure makes things freeze, so they might cancel each other out. Probably still lethal to humans, though. At 70 gigapascals and 2000 Celsius, what materials form a transparent fluid or gas? Silicon dioxide, commonly known as silica. Water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. For precise predictions, advanced simulations or experimental data from high pressure research using diamond anvil cells are necessary. Hmm, diamond anvil cells. I wonder what those are. Let's check that in a bit. Alright, so the options are silica, carbon dioxide or water. And as ChatGPT itself says, we'll need to check some of these things ourselves. Let's start with silica. Silica is quartz, which is what sand is mostly made of. Sand is solid at room temperature and pressure. TKOR has a video where they melt sand. At room pressure, you can melt sand at 1700 Celsius. But what about at 70 gigapascals, a million atmospheres? The paper Melting Behaviour of Silicon Dioxide by Andro et al. has a table of melting points all the way up to 120 gigapascals, which is amazing. They use something called a diamond anvil cell, which ChatGPT also mentioned. So let's talk about what those are. A diamond anvil cell uses two tiny diamonds to generate pressures of hundreds of gigapascals. This lets us reproduce the conditions found thousands of miles deep into the Earth. We can take the data from Andro et al. and plot a phase diagram. This will help us to see where the silica really will be fluid under our conditions. Pressure is towards the right in gigapascals and temperature is upwards. If we pick a pressure, we can plot the melting point of silica at that pressure. So here we have room pressure and the melting point is 1700 Celsius. As we increase the pressure, the melting point of silica increases. This makes sense because the pressure squeezes the molecules together. At temperatures below the melting point, silica is solid like sand. At temperatures above the moist point, silica is liquid like magma. We are at 70 gigapascals and 2000 Celsius. We can see that silica will clearly be solid at these conditions. If we'd blindly followed ChatGPT's response, we would have filled our lab with a giant block of quartz. But it's much easier to verify ChatGPT's ideas than to come up with the ideas ourselves. Let's check carbon dioxide next. ChatGPT wrote, CO2 can exist in a supercritical state. What's that? After reading around for a while, I learnt that supercritical fluids, or SCFs for short, form under high pressure and high temperature. If we start with a gas and add pressure, we get liquid. If we add temperature, we still get gas. If we add both temperature and pressure, then we get SCF. SCFs fill the available space like a gas, but are dense and can dissolve things like a liquid. 
The atmosphere on Venus is supercritical carbon dioxide. The surface of Venus is 9 megapascals and 460 Celsius. Together this is high enough for carbon dioxide to be in a supercritical state. We can see that the Venus atmosphere is maybe a little yellow, but clearly transparent. But will CO2 actually be SCF at 1000 miles, or will the high pressure cause it to freeze? Even when a material is above the critical point, it can still freeze solid if the pressure is high enough. The paper CO2 in the mantle, melting and solid, solid phase boundaries by Tawel de Berhan et al. 2012 provides data on melting points of carbon dioxide at high pressure. They're using molecular dynamics simulations. Here's the melting curve for carbon dioxide. Below the curve is solid as before and above is fluid. We're clearly still below the curve, so carbon dioxide will be solid too, frozen by the tremendous pressure. Okay, so we've eliminated silica and we've eliminated carbon dioxide. We've got one suggestion by ChatGPT left, which is water. Now water is a liquid at room temperature and pressure, whereas carbon dioxide is a gas. But water is an anomaly. Hydrogen bonding between the water molecules makes water behave very oddly. So let's just check. So here's the melting curve for water. It actually goes right through us, so it's right on the edge. It's too close to cool, really. We could use a heater in our lab and the water would be fluid. Of course, if the heater ever breaks, our lab might literally freeze. But actually, I discovered whilst I was reading around a rather more serious issue. There's something called supercritical water oxidation. It turns out that supercritical water is basically liquid fire. It can oxidize anything. At the start of this video, we talked about putting coal on a table and watching it turn to diamond. Well, if we fill our lab with supercritical water, the supercritical water will destroy our coal, oxidize it, burn it. So we'll have to think of something else. Hmm. So we went through all of ChatGPT's ideas. Should we just give up? Well, let's try asking it again. Materials potentially forming a transparent fluid or gas. Noble gases, elements like xenon and argon, could remain transparent. Noble gases, interesting. So noble gases don't really react with stuff. That sounds a lot better than using liquid fire. ChatGPT suggested xenon and argon. Let's check xenon first. Here's the melting curve for xenon. Oh, okay, no go. All right, let's check argon. Oh, okay, so argon will be solid too. 70 gigapascals freezes everything. So what are we going to do? So here's the periodic table of elements, and here's the noble gases. Argon has a lower melting point than xenon, and argon also has a lower atomic number than xenon. The atomic number relates to the weight of an atom, and it makes sense that lighter elements will freeze less easily, because the atoms might move around more for the same energy. What if we chose an even lighter noble gas, one with a lower atomic number? Before argon, we also have neon and helium. So let's try. Here's the melting curve of neon. So we're pretty close. We could use a heater. And here's the melting curve for helium. All right, so it passes well below us. Its melting point at 70 gigapascals is around 600 Celsius, so helium is clearly going to be a fluid. If we pressurize our lab with helium, we'll be able to move around inside of it. We can do experiments. Now, admittedly, we die under the pressure, but I'll think about that in a different video. In this video, we have a magical pressure-resistant suit. So at this point, a little belatedly, I thought maybe I should make some kind of mock-up for how this would look. So I dug out Unity and created a cave. I looked for a texture for the rock. Googling showed olivine might be good. Green. Added some fog. Maybe this much fog seems plausible. Then I accidentally watched a random video about Soviet RTGs. And I realized, oh, whoops, the rock is going to be glowing. <laughs> I thought I'd checked this point earlier, but clearly I didn't, so we'll have to wear strong sunglasses, and even then, it's basically going to be just bright whitish light. So yeah, I'll have to think about that in the next video. I already spent like six months on this one.